For more on India food security, I'm joined now by Dr. Melvin Kramer, the president of the EHA Consulting Group. And Dr. Kramer, will this plan be a success or is this simply a gimmick uh, that's going to be detrimental to India's economy? Well, I'm not sure if it would be detrimental to India's uh, economy. I think uh, one of the most important questions is can they uh, provide this food that will be clean, safe, and sanitary? And um, India seems to be committed uh, through their Food uh, Safety and Standards Authority uh, to ratchet up food safety. And part of food safety is actually security uh, because we know that we can have agroterrorism as well as bioterrorism. So uh, that's, that's something that uh, remains to be seen. You're, you're looking at a, uh, uh, providing food for two-thirds of the population, um, and Shweta Bajaj mentioned the, the issue of corruption. It's been seen in the past. How do you avoid that? Well, I think uh, corruption in governments around the world is clearly a problem. And uh, when you have uh, commodities, whether they're foods or cosmetics or drugs or um, medicines uh, of any type, where you can can have have room for critical error, uh, that's that's very problematic. And the question is, how committed are the regulators to regulate They're and put enough resources in to have enough safeguards that all of uh, the food would be safe from uh, either chemicals like we saw a few weeks ago with the pesticides, uh, bacteria or um, even physical contaminants like glass and metal. Well, and Dr. Kramer, we had you on after that tragedy involving those uh, school children yes. in India. Uh, it was a, tra a tragic story. And of course, that creates a spotlight on India right now. But give us a sense of the landscape out there. When it comes to food security, we hear these big stories emanating out of perhaps India or other developing countries. But, but other countries are struggling as well with this issue. Can you just kind of give us a broad brush strokes of, of what we're seeing out there? Well, I think food safety and security has come to the forefront. Look, it's just a few years ago that FDA in the United States passed the Food um, Safety Modernization Act that hasn't fully been implemented, uh, and clearly we're undergoing our own rulemaking. India is part of Codex Alimentarius, which is um, under the aegis of the uh, Food and Agricultural Organization uh, of the United Nations. And uh, we in the United States and in the EU import a tremendous amount of food uh, from India. A matter of fact, uh, the FDA has two offices, one in Mumbai and the other in New Delhi. Um, they have uh, communication, education. A matter of fact, 70 uh, top regulators and academicians and industry leaders uh, had a, a seminar put on by the US FDA and the University of Maryland in, in Cochin. So this is something that is a, is a work in progress. Cooperation and collaboration actually makes it, it it's a win-win. We get in the United States about 25% of our spices and food additives, coloring agents, uh, and oils from India. Uh, we've had some issues, uh, regulatory issues. We had a salmonella outbreak, if you recall, from the um, fish, tuna fish scrapings that uh, was associated with uh, sushi. And uh, our FDA and uh, their government worked very, very closely. And once it was uh, determined which plant it was, the manufacturing permit was suspended by the Indian government. So there, there's, they, they have the rudiments, and they're building the infrastructure. Uh, and um, let's face it, it's a worldwide problem. And we're trying to take a global approach uh, to set minimum standards and best practices. Well, Dr. Kramer, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Certainly appreciate it. Thank you.